have in you. It's not those degrees that you have, Lord. It's not those, those, those friends that you have. But you have to go through the process. See, we've been through battles. And we, we count it as a process. Them just little battles. Little bitty battles. That's nothing. That's nothing. It's not until you embrace the true process. The true process. The children of Israel, they were going through over in Egypt, but they still hadn't been processed. You would think after someone would go through all the things of being in captivity, slavery, all the things that happened, that they would understand once they got out of it. We do the same thing. Year after year, we expose ourselves to the same people that are going nowhere, the same environments that don't produce anything. We let the same people speak into our lives that have no, no authority, no power in the word of God. But we won't release these people. We keep on letting them walk in and out of our life. We sitting here right now, we, and we and we Bible told us a lot of y'all. Y'all got me on this because y'all can quote scriptures like y'all can shoot them out. Y'all got me on that. But you shoot those scriptures out, and the devil's still running wild. So that means that you know in scriptures, but you haven't applied it yet. I've often heard people say knowledge is power. I beg to differ. Knowledge is only potential power. It's not until you put it into action. I've got education knowledge all my life. But I haven't used it. I just told you I didn't start using it until after my MBA. I could have been using it after high school. I could have been using it the first four years of college. Shoot, I ain't have to have thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of student loan if I'd have started using it earlier. A lot of us don't have to be in the situation that we're in if you would start applying it. Understanding the process, understanding what's in this word. The process. A and two. The process comes to build character. What we've seen in a lot of men and women of God in this 21st century moving beyond. The reason why we can't see change. You see a lot of preachers, preachers popping up everywhere. They won't, uh, it was a one young man called in the office and, and told the apostle, the apostle, you said you're going to give me a robe. Give me a robe. I need that robe. I need it tomorrow. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, young brother, the robe is one thing. But what's under the robe is what's more important. You want to put on the robe, but you forgot to put on your underwear. You want to put on the robe, but you forgot to protect what's really important. You still want to live like you want to live, but you want to put on the robe and come, come in front of the people of God. It ain't in the robe. It's in your character. It's in your integrity. We have a lot of men and women of God that we're watching on TV in. All these uh, on the Word Network that haven't been processed. Right. Only to become victim of another scandal. Yeah. Scandal is running wild through the church. Yeah. Social media is making it so easy for pastors to get in trouble. Yeah. Text messages making it so easy for men and women of God to be in trouble. Yeah. Text messages breaking up homes. Text messages breaking up schools. and you People are starting wars. Yeah. Yes. Because of lack of integrity in everything that we have available. Yeah. So the process comes to bring character. The children of Israel, they needed character. Character. Also, they didn't focus. Many of us, we, we, in, in any opportunity that comes our way, we grab hold to it. Any and everything. It don't even have to be who you are. You just say, man, it's an opportunity, I'm going to take it. Not focused on the things of God. Easily distracted. A lot of times I, I share with my students all the time, when it's time to study, when it's time to read this word, it seems like everybody and their mama got to want to call you in. Right, yeah. And we easily distract. Before you know it, you had your, it's funny how the heart and the mind just won't line up. Before you got to the house, you said, I'm going to get home, I'm going to get in this word. Because God, I ain't picked up my Bible all week. I'm going to get in it. God, I'm going to spend some time with you. And before you can hit the door, somebody can call you on your cell phone. And now you can put the Bible up for another day. Well, I'm going to get it in the morning before I go to work. No, you're not. You're going to be late in the morning anyway. So we haven't gotten that focus. See, that when you get that focus, when you start to get that focus, then you understand details of your life. The details that are taking place in your life. See, God doesn't deal with the details as the man of God has already spoken. God deals with, he gives you a promise, 
And the details, everything that comes in between, he gives that to us to learn a lesson from him. That's, right. That's where the lesson comes in, at the details. Yes. And then, through the focus, then he starts to give you, you understand the process comes to give you joy. Inner peace from him. Yes. Inner peace. A lot of us haven't experienced that joy. That joy, even if everything ain't working together, you still just happy on the inside. You still just bubbling on the inside. You still know that God is in control. Yes. See, it's not until you get to that place where you're starting to understand what the process is doing for you. Yes. I've worked several, I've, I've worked multiple jobs for, for the last, what, six, seven years. And it wasn't until this last year, on the job I'm on right now, that I, I, I didn't get frustrated anymore. Because I would get frustrated. God, my father is an international prelate. My father, got, he, he, he's in a wealthy place. My father, he, he, he attracts wealth. Why in the heck do I got to work two or three jobs to pay my bills? Frustrated. Thinking I'm entitled to have something and I haven't even been processed. We want the, we want the, we want the miracles, we want the blessings, but you ain't been processed. Because let the truth be told, had he given it to me too soon, I probably wouldn't be right here today. I wouldn't have gotten married. I wouldn't have started a community center for kids. It would have been about me. I would have took everything that I had and blew it, squandered it all. We see it every day. I'm still a young man, so it's still a lot of play I can get out. But it's the process. I said, God, I don't want to go another year saying happy new me and still in the same place. I can't do that no more. 2012 cannot be the same as 2011. But it's not until you understand the process. Where you are is not who you are. We say it, we confess it, but we still live the same raggedy life. It develops patience. Some of us, are, we're not patient enough. Everything needs to happen right now. Right now. You're not ready for that car. You're not ready for that house. If you get it, you ain't going to come to church. You're not ready for that money. You get it, you ain't going to pay your tithes. You're not ready for that new wardrobe. You get it, you ain't going to be able to praise God because you're too cute. You ain't ready for it yet. You need to be processed. Developing patience. Also, you look over in Matthew 21 and 43, the word of God says, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. In the process, you learn how to be a producer. You can't be a producer just existing. You have to be in that perfect will of God, understanding the process, then your, your life begins to uh, 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 produce fruit. Are you producing? Are you just existing? What's come of your life? Are you, is it going to be said, when you leave this earth, that the world never even knew that you came? Will it be said that you had plenty of potential but nobody ever seen it? What is your life producing? The word of God says, I'm going to take it away if you can't produce. So therefore, I got to put you into a situation because if you ain't producing, I got to make you produce now. I got to bring you to a point where you're not just going to take your, your, my time lightly. You're going to use my time to get closer to me and become a producer. Become a producer, not just filling up a seat. Not just, if you, look, one thing that I love about our man of God, about Chief Apostle Vincent, see the pressure, what, what a lot of y'all don't realize, the pressure don't come from home. No. The pressure don't come from a Chief Apostle Vincent. No. The thing I love about it, the pressure comes, I get my pressure from y'all. Right. Y'all expectations. Amen. What y'all think I ought to be doing. Amen. But with the man of God, what I love about him, he always says, son, you got to do you. You got to have your own style. Right. So what God is saying to us, even through the situation that we're going through, I'm praying you for a perfect situation that you fit to be productive. Yeah. You're made like you're made for a reason. Yeah. You work good with objects for a reason. Yeah. You work good with people for a reason. You don't work good with people for a reason. Yeah. You like technology for a reason. You don't like technology for a reason. Yeah. Because you fit somewhere. Yeah. You fit. Oftentimes we get in where we fit in, but then we don't understand. Well, if I don't fit here, it must be somewhere I fit to be productive. If you're in a situation where you're not producing, then you've gotten in a situation where you don't fit. 
You need to be asking God right now, God, put me somewhere where my life can produce fruit. Because I'm in this situation, I'm stuck in this situation, I'm frustrated, my life isn't producing fruit. I need to be where I fit. Productive. Productive. Productivity. In 83, we find that the children of Israel, they start to eat from the master's table. They begin seeking God. I had to begin seeking God. We cannot afford not to seek God because he has confidential information about who you are. You can't afford to go through life without ever seeking his face. Because he knows. A lot of times we don't understand. But why do I need to develop that prayer life? Why do I need to get in this word? Because that's where your purpose is. That's where you become productive. He knows who you are. I can't afford to seek after y'all because y'all don't know who I am. Y'all don't see where I'm at. Right. You can't afford to seek after your friends. They only know where you at. They only have information. They don't have a revelation. Yeah. Information. So oftentimes we find ourselves moving in the direction that our friends, our family have put us in because we sought them and now we didn't seek God. So that's when the frustration has set, set in. God was showing the children of Israel, you need to become totally dependent on me. Yes. Now, when God first gave them that manna, they didn't like it. They said, they spit, what is this? Them fools got to talking about when they was in slavery. They got to talking about the, how, how plentiful it was in slavery. Because it, it was a dis it was it wasn't tasteful for them because they weren't in commune with God. It became distasteful. They didn't like it. They didn't want it. They didn't want nothing of it. When you get to a point in your life where the things of God become distasteful, you ought to commune with them. That's right. That's you ought to commune with them. And oftentimes, when God ain't answered it fast enough for you, what you end up doing? My son blessed me with this the other day. He said, Daddy, you know why I make A's on my test? I say, son, what, what? Because Daddy told you to pray while you, before you take the test? He said, no, daddy, that ain't it. I pray while I'm in the tent. I pray while I'm in the tent. See, what happens is this. We get into the test, and before we seek God, we seek Facebook. Before we seek God, we seek Twitter. Let me post my problems on here, and let me see what the response is going to be. Let me post my problems and see what my friends that's not really your friends going to say about it. So you expose your problems to five million people that are not in communion with God, that are not giving you some ignorant revelation, and now you can't understand why your house is a hellhole now. Because you have sought counsel in, a, in technology. You sought counsel in a Facebook when you need to be looking in God's book. Dependence on God. We need to develop the, what the children of Israel didn't understand. The prayer life is critical. Yes. They needed a deeper prayer life. Yes. One thing I like about one thing I like about Jonah, like my son blessed him, in the belly of that well, he knew I can't be released from this situation until I pray. All, we, we say it all the time. We come to church and we pray with the, with the worship team. We pray when the man of God says pray. But how often are you praying on your own? How often are you seeking God for yourself? You can only pray so much with an apostle. That only gets you so far. As if it'll get you by, to the parking lot. Because that, you've been anointed for that setting. But then when you get to that job Monday. Dealing with that boss that's been trying to get you fired for the last five years. When you get home, dealing with that, that family member, that husband, that wife that's frustrated because you're going to church, you're going to have to have your own prayer life. That's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to release you. So I would go ahead and venture to say and challenge you to say, the reason we haven't been released yet is because we haven't prayed yet. We haven't prayed yet. Like I said earlier, we've only seen battles. What we're seeing over in the Middle East, what we've seen in Japan, we've seen earthquakes, tsunamis, things like that. God is already saying, y'all got to understand the process that y'all, I'm putting y'all through. That's right, that's right. A process doesn't come for you to remain in the same place that you are. A process doesn't come for you to just exist. 